What's going on, Packer fans? Happy Saturday. I hope you're enjoying your weekend. Welcome back to the Pack a Day podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. Of course, you can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. Appreciate you joining me today. We got a later update from Ian Rappaport on Friday about, you know, some Aaron Rodgers buzz, if you will, make of it what you want to. Um, but his tweet basically said, with all eyes on Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers in his future, here is the latest. Sources say Rodgers is truly torn on where he wants to play in 2022. While many in the NFL expect him to return, there's lots of positivity in Green Bay. He is going back and forth on what he wants. Now, tough to unpack all of this, right? Because, you know, we all sort of had the, you know, anonymous sources saga of 2021 that I think still is in the back of our mind. And it does still seem a bit odd to me that it's one thing if Aaron Rodgers was a free agent, right? And he's choosing where he wants to go. And Brian Gutekinds has already confirmed there's no guarantee that he gave Rodgers that he would trade him. Now, I still think if Rodgers said, trade me, Green Bay would probably try to get something done. However, this is an offseason where Rod Rodgers is basically wax poetic about how amazing things have been in Green Bay, has talked glowingly about his coaches, the front office, his teammates. The NFC is fairly barren, as we've talked about the last couple days. His best option to win is clearly in Green Bay. If he goes to some AFC team, there are some really tough teams that he's going to have to compete with there. I don't think Green Bay is trading him to an NFC team. Yes, maybe Tampa or San Francisco would maybe intrigue Rodgers and their rosters and how they're built. I just don't see Green Bay saying, yeah, we'll trade you to Tampa or San Francisco. I think it would have to be an AFC team. And like his entire team went to bat for him this offseason on numerous occasions. It just would strike me as very odd if Rodgers came back and said, I'm demanding a trade I want out of Green Bay after him going really on a tour of how great Green Bay has been, how the bridges have been fixed and mended. It, it all just doesn't add up to me. Now, as I've said all along, nothing would shock me. This is still within the realm of possibility, I think. But I still very much see Rodgers coming back. And if the, if you're torn one way or the other, to me, you take the path of least resistance, right? And I, I it just would seem much more likely to me if, if he said, hey, I, I'm going to come back for one more year. I'm going to play for Green Bay, but I want to be an unrestricted free agent next year. Okay. Like Green Bay probably agrees to that. Whether they should or shouldn't would be a conversation maybe for another day. But Green Bay probably agrees to that and they get him back for another season, then he can choose next year on his own volition if he wants to go play for another team. And he would have free reign, right? He could go to Tampa, San Francisco, Chicago, Minnesota. That would be an option. Green Bay would probably sign off on that. Maybe they wouldn't, but I think you could probably make it a contract that Green Bay would basically have to get out of next season and so on and so forth. And again, we're at the point where Rodgers can just threaten to retire if he doesn't get what he wants. So he, he sort of has like a constant like trade chip anytime he wants, right? So I don't know. It still doesn't totally add up to me. And I still think the path of least resistance is likely what happens here, but another layer, another complexity. And it is telling that Rogers hasn't specifically made this decision yet. It is still out there. It is still pending. But as we stand right now, I still think something ultimately gets done. But again, we are as the, as the Rogers turns or days of our Rogers, whatever soap opera cliche that you want to uh, input here, but nothing is set in stone. And again, an interesting update to say the least. I guess from a Rogers standpoint, last thing I'll say here is maybe he just wants something different, right? Maybe it has nothing to do with the front office. Maybe it has nothing to do with his teammates. Maybe it has nothing to do with the Packers. Maybe it has nothing to do with winning. Maybe it has nothing to do with any of that. Maybe he just wants a change of scenery for the sake of a change of scenery. Maybe you saw Brady do it. Maybe you saw Manning do it. Maybe he saw Montana do it, whomever, right? And just said, Favre, I would like to maybe have, maybe have two years left and I'd just like to try something other than Green Bay. I did Green Bay for X amount of years and I want to go somewhere else. I am fully hypothesizing here. I don't know this, but maybe that's the case. And maybe it has nothing to do with anything else. And he just wants to change the scenery for the sake of doing something different with the last couple of seasons of his career. I don't know. It still doesn't totally add up to me. I still think he ends up back in Green Bay, but 
we will have to continue to wait and see what ultimately happens. All right, on to the main event, our main topic for today, and that is Green Bay and the things that they've sort of struggled with drafting over the course of the last really decade plus. We're now in full draft season. It's the NFL Combine. I wanted to take a look at some of the areas that, frankly, Green Bay just needs to do a much better job of evaluating and drafting as they start to you know, really move on eventually past the Rodgers era. But really, this is a major key draft for this team. And making sure that they get the best players possible that can help them win now is going to be paramount to their, their success this season. And if there's another all-in season next year, same thing. And even if not, right? You need to start to rebuild with young, explosive talent that can you know, hopefully help you win in the long term as well. So here are five areas where I think Green Bay needs to do a much better job with moving forward. I'm going to start with inside linebackers. You may have noticed my tweet from yesterday. If so, you already know the names, but here are the last what 12 inside linebackers that Green Bay has drafted. Isaiah McDuffie, Kamal Martin, Ty Summers, Oren Burks, Blake Martinez, Jake Ryan, Carl Bradford, Nate Palmer, Sam Barrington, Terrell Manning, DJ Smith, and Brad Jones. Not great. Now, Blake Martinez was a, a nice pick. There's no question about that. And they certainly got a lot of usefulness out of him, especially based on draft position. Brad Jones for a seventh round pick. All right, not bad. Jake Ryan, I think probably would have been a bit better had it not been for the big injury. But overall, this is a combination of not using top tier resources and just not being able to find the talent in later rounds of the draft. And even when they have gone top 100 picks, like in Oren Burks, for example, it hasn't worked out. So they have to do a better job of emphasizing this position and they need to do a better job of just drafting and developing linebackers for their scheme and their system and their team moving forward because this has been an issue. And going back to some of those losses against the 49ers in 2019 in the NFC Championship game, not being able to stop the run, yeah, the defensive front didn't do their job, but the linebackers were a big piece of that as well. So this has been an issue for some time now. You know this, I know this, we know this, everyone knows this. Devondre, that's why Devondre Campbell was such a revelation, right? But they have to do a better job. And as the linebackers get set to run in the combine and uh, do all their testing and drills, this is definitely a position that Green Bay has to do a much better job with. Next up is playmaking. Now, how do you want to evaluate this? Because to be fair, Devontae Adams, Aaron Jones are two pretty big playmakers and Green Bay's drafted and developed both of them, right? You could also make it like even a case like an MVS, right? Like an MVS is explosive playmaking ability. Finding that in the later rounds of the draft, that's pretty darn good. You go back and say like a Micah Hyde as a punt returner and some of the things he does as a defensive back is a playmaker, okay. But overall, playmaking, and specifically what I want to talk about offensively is like run after the catch, right? Devontae will do it at times, you know, Randall Cobb back in the day, like, but overall, this has been a team that has struggled to draft and develop playmakers and run after the catch guys. I think like Debo Samuel, and I know Debo Samuel is like a, you know, diamond in the rough, there's one in a million. So maybe that's a poor example, but you see so many of these teams are having so much success with players who can really sort of make their money with run after contact and run after the catch, whether it's at tight end, running back, kick returner, punt returner, wide receiver. You've got to find guys that it, it's not all on Aaron Rodgers to be able to make the plays with his arm or the receivers to be able to just make the plays as route runners or contested catch specialists. You want to see somebody get the ball and then make somebody miss in the open field. And again, Aaron Jones, Devontae Adams, definitely that. But Devontae Adams, Aaron Jones, we're looking at a while back now. If you go back to 2009, really since 2009, I would argue that Jones and Adams are the only two that they have selected that have had any real playmaking ability, that have been game changers, game breakers. Not There've been a couple here and there that you could maybe make arguments for, but it's been few and far between. And in my opinion, they need to do a much better job of evaluating and finding those players who can make plays after contact, after the catch, because either way, like Jones and Adams, the, the time is running out, right? If Adams is back, which we don't know for sure, probably what, three more years in Green Bay, maybe something like that. And Jones is probably in his last year as a Packer. So they have to do a much better job of finding those explosive playmakers and people who can make plays after the catch. 
Next up is special teams. And part of that goes back to what I just said, right? Finding guys who can make plays with the ball in their hands. They haven't had a kick returner or a punt returner worth a darn in a very long time. Yeah, you know, Irvin made a couple plays here and there, but you know what I mean. Not the explosive returner. That could be something that they could use. But also finding guys in the later rounds of the draft that aren't only just draft and develop players, but guys that embrace, not only embrace special teams, but are really good at it. That has been a major issue for the Packers. And even when they've dabbled into drafting punters or long snappers, they haven't worked out Hunter Bradley, J.K. Scott. So whether it's a future kicker, punter, long snapper, guys who can actually play on teams, kick returner, punt returner, they have to do a better job of finding players who are going to embrace that special teams and really bring in a new special teams culture in Green Bay. Next up, tight ends. You'd have to go back to Jermichael Finley in 2008 to really find a playmaker or a really you know, bona fide starting caliber tight end. Josiah DeGuaro is still a sort of wait and see. Jay Sternberger didn't work out. Kennard Bachman. Richard Rogers has had a pretty nice career, but certainly never lived up to like a top 100 pick, right? DJ Williams, Ryan Taylor, Andrew Corliss. Like it's just been a real struggle to find consistent tight ends who can stay on the field all three downs, be blockers, playmakers, pass catchers, etc. Now, They've done a good job of finding at times guys in free agency. You know, Jared Cook had a good second half of his one year in Green Bay. Robert Tunyon was a revelation before getting hurt. So they've done it okay. Obviously, Mercedes Lewis, but there's also been Jimmy Graham and Martellus Bennett and, and others that have not worked out. And you don't want to have to go out and spend money at tight end. You want to be able to find these guys and develop them and make them into really strong, solid tight ends. It's another position that Green Bay's really struggled with. And again, going back to Drew Michael Finley in 2008, 14 years ago, since finding a, a tight end of that caliber who can be a playmaker for you, that's a problem. They need to do better. And then last but not least, third round picks. And you probably all know this by now, but here's their last 10 third round picks. Amari Rogers, Josiah DeGuara, Jay Sternberger, Oren Burks, Montrevious Adams, Kyler Fackrell, Ty Montgomery, Kyrie Thornton, Richard Rogers, Alex Green. Holy crap. If Kyler Fackrell is your best third round pick of your last 10 third round picks, something has gone incredibly wrong. They have to find a way to be better or just move the heck out of the third round or move that pick for a player or use it to move your second or first round pick up further but you have got to be better. These are top 100 selections. You are mostly in the draft making your hay in the top 100 selections in the draft. You cannot strike out in the third round that often with that amount of regularity. That is going to catch up with you at some point. And that's why you need to go out and sign big expensive free agents and your salary cap becomes an issue and so on and so forth. So third round picks have got to be much better for Green Bay, or it's going to continue to be a problem where they have to go out and sign players in free agency. Because think of it, right? If Amari Rogers was a great slot receiver right now, they probably wouldn't have to go out and maybe try to bring back a Randall Cobb or go get a slot receiver this offseason. If Josiah DeGuaro were an all-around tight end right now, again, problem solved. Same thing with Jay Sternberger, right? They should have two really good tight ends. They We're not even sure if they have one at this point. Oren Burks at linebacker, if he's really good, you don't have to go out and sign a Devondre Campbell. Montrevious Adams at defensive tackle could give you depth along, like you just have to hit on some of these things. They haven't, and it's been a cause for concern. So five things that Green Bay needs to be better at, inside linebackers, playmakers slash run after the catch ability, special teams, tight ends, and third round picks. That's going to do it for me today. Thank you for joining me. I'll be right back here tomorrow with an all new episode, but until next time, and as always, go Pack Go.